All right, welcome to our quick review of commercial versus subsistence agriculture. And it really is going to be just a quick overview between the two. Um, the slides were originally designed to accompany the book, The Cultural Landscape. I did do a little bit of modifying on my own just to make the note taking piece a little bit easier. Uh, and I am, of course, your lecturer, Ms. Gall. <clears throat> so when we're talking about commercial and subsistence agriculture, there's really five major characteristics that distinguish the two. Okay, The first of those characteristics is the purpose of the farming. Okay, Commercial farmers are always farming to make money. That's what that word means, commercial, is to make money. Okay, Subsistence farmers, their goal is to support the family or at best the nearby community. But uh, most of what gets produced gets eaten by the farmer's family. The second major characteristic is um, the percentage of farmers in the labor force. So, and now we're talking out of an entire population. So in um, countries that are largely commercially based in terms of their agriculture, there's comparatively few. So to give you some idea, okay, here in the US, we're very, we engage almost entirely in commercial based agriculture. And there's roughly 3% of people who commercially farm. Now contrast that with what you think of when you think of how much food the U.S. produces. Just to give you some idea of how much actual food each of those farmers must produce. Subsistence farmers, on the other hand, it's most of the people that live within the community. Okay, so they tend to be, it tends to be a lot of people. Um, and another way to look at this, and you'll notice this when we look at a couple of maps here in another minute or two, is to think about most commercial agriculture occurs in more developed countries and subsistence agriculture tends to occur in less developed countries. Okay, so that's just another way of thinking about levels of development in terms of what types of economic activity are people engaged in. Okay, our third characteristic that distinguishes between commercial and subsistence agriculture is the use of machinery and the role machinery plays. On a, on a commercial farm, there's lots of machinery and lots of machine-based labor. Okay, that's everything from the combine to the harvester. Okay, these things that do the work that used to be done by human beings. On subsistence farms, on the other hand, you see very few machines and the machines you do see are very low tech. Okay. Um, they're the kind of machines you learn about in a basic physics class, oftentimes. It's mostly human labor, or wherever possible, they use animal labor. Because, of course, animals can do more than humans do in terms of the amount they can pull and the length of time that they're able to work. But what you don't see are a lot of machines, so a lot of the work gets done manually. For instance, on a subsistence wheat farm, what you would see is you would see the farmer out with the skiff, which is those kind of long knives with the, or they've got long handles with kind of the curved blade. A lot of times you see them with um, the Grim Reaper might be where you're most familiar with it, but you just take those back and use them and you can cut through grass pretty easily with that or with a machete or similar sort of knife. And then to separate the wheat from what's called the, sh the shaft or the chafe, um, you literally have to pound it. And in subsistence farming, that gets done by hand. Okay, Commercial farms, they have machines that do that for, for, the, for the farmers. Okay. Um, another thing to look at is farm size. Commercial farms are huge. Generally speaking, they're hundreds of acres, if not thousands of acres large. Okay, subsistence farmers are significantly smaller. Most subsistence holdings, and again, this depends on where in the world you're looking at, are anywhere from at most, I would say probably the very most, maybe 10 acres down to, in some areas of the world, those, those holdings get down to maybe a quarter of an acre in size. Okay, so, and size matters when we're talking about um, how efficient a farm is and how much it produces. The fifth characteristic that we want to look at is the relationship of farming in those areas to other businesses. Okay, so commercial farms have lots and lots of ties to other businesses, including things like fertilizer companies or seed companies to the machinery companies that sell them the tractors and the harvesters and the combines um, or the milking machines or things like that. Um, 
commercial farmers have links to advertisers, of course, to agribusiness companies, um, links to transportation companies to get the product to market, and on and on and on, and I can keep going down the list. Subsistence farmers, on the other hand, and subsistence farming has very few, if any, ties to other local businesses. And what little business occurs tends to be, is more likely to be between local farmers and could very easily take the form of barter, as in, I'll give you this basket of wheat if you give me that basket of rice. Okay, so barter is just a fancy way of saying trade. Um, but trade like when you're a kid, not trade like when you're an adult. Okay, so I mentioned before that um, subsistence agriculture tends to involve lots and lots of workers, and you could overlay a map of agricultural workers with a map of economic development, and you would see a very strong correlation. So our areas that are dark green there, those are our less developed areas. Or the high, they might be like India oftentimes, depending on exactly on where you're looking at, might be that higher end of less developed, right? China rapidly reaching that very high end of less developed. If not, actually I would argue right now they're probably industrializing much of Africa, definitely less developed. You get those mid-level countries, right, where, um, and I would actually put, by the way, that 20 to 49 category, that's still a pretty high percentage. Um, those mid-level countries where it's roughly 5 to 19 percent, okay. Um, and then you get the very well-developed countries where it's really below 5 percent. Um, there are always exceptions to prove the rules, like Libya and Africa um, has fewer than five, but if you look at Libya, Libya is also a desert, okay? Um, and so it makes it much harder to engage in, in agriculture. But by and large, you're going to notice a lot of, a lot of um, overlap between those two. Similar to um, and related is the idea of the amount of farmland per tractor. Okay, a tractor here being used as a, a way to measure development um, or a way to measure the use of machinery. Okay, so the United States, right, um, very, very few acres. That means there's more tractors, right? And a hectare, I think, if I remember right, is like two and a half, three acres, something like that. Okay, um, all the way down to you get to where there's like 500 hectares per tractor. That means there are not very many tractors. And so most of the work is being done by hand. And again, if you overlay this with that map, with the last map, and flip back and forth a little bit, you'll notice that there's a lot, a lot of similarity here in terms of what areas don't have many tractors but do have a lot of people engaged in agriculture, or very few people, but lots of tractors. So this has been our quick review of commercial and subsistence agriculture, and we went through five major ways to kind of tell the difference between the two and, five, and those five differences. And then we looked at some maps to kind of show us how that plays out geographically. So if you have any questions, please do feel free to see me in class and ask them. I'd be delighted to answer any questions I can.